Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, Electric Violin Shop live stream. Obviously, I'm not at the shop, I'm at home. It's a little later than I usually sit at the shop. Uh, but we've got a sweet guest today. We've got my buddy Tyler, who is not only a fantastic bass player, but also an attorney. And as we were thinking about talking about musical contracts, I was like, well, who should we, we should get somebody who knows how to lead a band and has issued a lot of these contracts and is an attorney. So he actually knows what he's talking about. Cause I could talk to you guys about contracts. I've dealt with contracts for 20 some years, but I'm not an attorney. So um, yeah, I, the stuff that I carry, just this, the things that I say just don't carry any weight as far as an expert. So we actually have a real live expert on here. So yes, we'll be talking about musical performance contracts. Uh, I've got a sample contract and rider that's actually based on uh, the one that I use for my solo show. And Tyler and I are gonna kind of go through those contracts and riders and break them down. And uh, there should be, let me put on here, I think I've got a link. So both sides, uh, we're live on Facebook and on YouTube. So you guys should have just seen a link, oops. Yeah, should be a link on there, maybe not. Let me see if I can pull this link up again. Um, I will try to post this link to where the Google Doc is, where this contract is that we will be discussing. Let me post that, all right. So there should be in the comments section, there should be a link to the Google Drive where the documents are that we're going to be talking about. So you guys can pull those up and you can look, they'll be on the screen too, but it could be kind of tiny if you're on your phone. So, um, yeah. All right. So with no, no further ado, this is my friend, Tyler. What's happening, man. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. Hey. Me. Yeah. You're all dressed up. Looks like you just came from court. I did. I did. It's, it's a long, long day, day as, as it is always, but I'm um, glad, glad, glad to be uh, back, back at the office, office here, here, back at home. Um, um, ready, ready to, to, ready ready to, to talk, talk music, music, which is yeah. the, the, the fun part. part. Yeah, you he um, plays bass uh, when I play in my thing, played in my uh, master's recital not too long ago, and you guys can find video of that on my YouTube page. And uh, we both play for an artist uh, named Brooke McBride from Nashville. And uh, did you play with her just the other night when she was in town? Um, I played, played uh, a, a, week a week ago, ago okay. out in um, Knoxville. Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That, was, that was a good trip. trip. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, I've been, been uh, a little about me. Um, I've, I've been a side, side man playing, playing bass, bass uh, for, for about 25 years with a lot of groups. I run, I run a wedding, wedding band in the, in the area. area. Um, I, went I went to school, school at, the at the University of Miami, Miami for music, business, business and jazz performance. performance. I, I followed, followed up my studies there, there uh, going to law school, earned my, earned my JD there, licensed attorney in North Carolina since 2009. Um, I'm, I'm involved, involved in a criminal defense practice, practice in addition to my music work, but, but um, have done a lot of these types, types of agreements, agreements that we're going to be talking about today um, uh, through, through for, for, and, 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 and quite a quite bit through my, through my, my own, own office as well as uh, just, just working with people I know that I've, that I've played with, that I've been in bands with, that I've gone to school with, things like that. Um, there's, there's always issues coming up with contracts, performance agreements in, in particular, um, but, but we've... Uh, Looked, looked at, at agreements, agreements for recording, recording um, drink, drink, uh, uh, endorsement, endorsement deals, deals for major, major brands, brands uh, TV, TV performances, um, you know, anything, anything you can think of. Um, always, always love talking, talking to Matt, Matt playing, playing with Matt, with Matt um, for, 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 for many, many years now, here, here and there. Um, but, but, and I've, and I've, I've done, done a lot of gigs, gigs both as a side man on bass and, and as a band leader. leader. But, but um, um, I, love I love having these discussions, discussions with Matt because Matt, Matt um, I, I know, has played, played more than me and been in even, uh, uh, as, as many situations uh, and stories as, as anyone I know just about. So, so uh, he's, he's seen, seen it all and um, it's, 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 it's great to bounce, to bounce things off each other, each other um, because, because you always get something interesting out of it. Yeah. I've played a lot of sketchy situations where a contract would have been really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, sometimes, sometimes you, you never know until, until after, after it happens. happens. That's, That's why you always, always got to be looking ahead, ahead always got to be planning. Uh, keeping these documents updated uh, is important so you're covered on all levels. Make, make sure, sure you get paid, paid. Make sure you get what you need. Um, you know, you know it, a, lot a lot of times, times you don't need them. A lot of times we do things informally in this business, and, 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 and that can be just fine and good a lot of times. But the times when you need them, you really do need them. Yeah. 
so you you use a contract for every performance with the restless that's that's his band by the way the restless uh, and i'll i'll actually put up a link in the uh, comments so you guys know where that is um yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much, much. I, 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 I can't, can't think, think of many times where we haven't used, used one, one. Um, it's, it's something, something that you know, you know t templates are good to start for with these we, we, have we have those but um they, they really, really need to be tailored to each specific situation, situation. um you know, you know weddings and events obviously have their, their own, own whole set of, of um, pitfalls, pitfalls to avoid. And you, you got to try, try to think of everything you can, can to put in there for your particular situation, your group members, what they need um, at, at a time. time. And, and, and so it's, it's hard to. to. So you pretty, pretty much every time, time something goes wrong, we go, we go back, back to that contract. contract. Um, how, how, how could we have worded this where we wouldn't have had this situation? situation. And, it's and it's worked, worked pretty well, for considering. I mean, we haven't had the same problem twice too much. Um, and when, and when, when you do have it that second, second time, you can pull out that contract and say, hey, um, when, when you, have you have people responsible people there, a wedding, wedding planner, a, a venue, venue manager, manager um, you, know, you know, these places, places they, they get that in advance, advance you, you get your riders in advance, advance. Uh, they're, they're on, on notice. notice. Yeah. So hopefully everybody knows what a contract in a rider is. Can you just kind of give a brief explanation of what a contract is and what a rider is? Sure. sure. Um, a contract, contract can be many, many things, things. Um, it, it, and, and, but, but um, you, know, you know, the, the, the elements of it, it's got to be agreement between, between, between parties, parties um, and it has to be for consideration. consideration. So, so you're, you're playing, playing an event or, or a gig, gig um, some, some sort of show, show. Um, it's, it's got to say what it is, what, what the uh, exchange uh, is, uh, presumably uh, music services for more money. Um, and, and you know, you know some, some places, places it's, it's going to be different in, in, in different, different situations. situations. North, North Carolina, Carolina can be a little more lax in some places. Some some, some, some places for some purposes it has to be written. In some places it has, it has to be signed by both parties. Some, sometimes, sometimes you can you can, you can do, do well, well with an email, email. Um, but, but it's, it's always, always best to be most formal as you can. can. You want to have a document signed by both parties, dated with all the pertinent information, location, time. Um, as, as be as specific, specific as you can, can and, uh, and uh, certainly, certainly how, how much, how much, how much you're, you're going to get paid and what, what method. Yeah. And then a rider. Rider, rider is, is all the things, things that, that um, you're, 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 you're going to need to be accommodated with. with. And, and, and um, you, know, you know, sometimes, sometimes that, that can be incorporated into, into the contract, but, but um, sometimes, sometimes it's in a kind of an addendum to the contract. contract. And, and, and the purpose for that is so it can be given to other people that are, that are going to be, um, non non signing, non -signing third, third parties of these agreements that, that need, you need to know this stuff. stuff. Um, you're you're going to be a, um, contracting, contracting with, with a promoter or, or a couple or a business, business and, and uh, they're, they're going to need to give something to the venue. venue. You, you might not want to give them your whole, whole uh, financial, financial agreement, agreement. So they, 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 they know all the ins and outs. They, they want to know. They need to know. Just just this is going to be just what they need to know. What you're going to need. Some things we've talked about. I think. Power, power requirements, requirements very important. important. Staging, Staging. Um, and any sound, sound or lights, lights that they're, they're doing. Um, certainly, certainly the uh, you know you, know, you have, have a big group when they're when they're, when they're not out there they're going to need somewhere to sit somewhere, somewhere to change. Um, some, some you're, you're, you're on site for a long time you don't have access to meals, to meals. you got they got to provide meals. meals. Um, you're traveling, traveling how that's, that's going to be arranged. Lodging a lot of you know when you're on tour and things like that you're going to need overnight lodging and. Um, how, um, that's how that's going to be accommodated. accommodated. Some, some of these places, places have, have, have uh, situations, situations where they can get your rooms and it's, it's, it's going to be uh, more economic, economic for both parties. parties. So it's, it's good, good to let them know what you need. need. Um, and, then, and then you can go from there and negotiate that out. Um, but, but again, it's, it's going to put them on notice and make sure you have everything that you need to do the best performance you can do. And this is going to keep your performers happy as well, anyone you're working with. And that just is always going to lead to a better performance. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's not, we're not trying to be divas here. Like, I've got to have a place to change clothes. Or right. I'm, I'm, if I'm going to be on site for eight hours, I'm going to have to eat or I'm going to get grumpy and start breaking things. And nobody wants that. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and a lot, lot of times, times you know, you'll, you'll have, have a writer and someone, someone will complain, complain about, about it or, or, or kind, kind of, of you, know, you know, raise, raise an, an eyebrow. eyebrow. But, but when, when you, you explain, explain to people, people you know, you, know, people, people, uh, you want you to give them good energy. Um, you, know, you know, they, they, they talk, talk about, about breaks and things like that the same way. way. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta, gotta have a good place to perform. To perform. You, gotta you gotta have, have uh, proper, uh, proper, proper conditions, conditions to, to, to perform, perform the best you can. can. 
um, and, and you got to be fed, fed and, 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 and rested, rested and, 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 and everything, everything you need so you can give the best performance, best performance most energetic performance you can give. give. And, that's and that's just in everyone's, everyone's interest. interest. Right. Yeah, people don't understand, like, I'm a grown man. I'm going to be jumping up and down on this stage for like 90 solid minutes. I'm going to be white at the end of that 90 minutes. I'm going to need a place to sit down. And I'm going to need a drink. And and this stage has to be pretty solid because if it's not, I'm just going to break it. Right. right. And my, my experience is people get that pretty quick, quick after, after, after you really purse it out. It out. Um, um, a, a, lot a lot of people don't take a new event. event. Uh, uh, how, how these are really, really all day, day uh, affairs, affairs, a lot of these events. events. Um, because, because you got to be sound checked um, at, at anything professional and, and, and out of the way and quiet before people come in and they get it all set up. And, and uh, that, that takes, takes some time, time. and, and it, 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 it takes, takes a lot out, 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 of, out, of, out of anyone. So um, it's, it's important to make, to make sure everything goes smoothly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we were just talking before this broadcast. I played a show uh, last weekend with some friends of mine, and we got there in the stage that is in their rider that they've got to have. And it says in the rider it's got to be level. It wasn't level. Like it, it wasn't even close to level. It's like off. And the drummer's sitting here like this trying to play. And if you know anything about playing the drums, that's exhausting. Trying to sit there at an angle and play. Now they didn't meet the terms of the contract. So what are we going to do? We're just going to not play? You know, we're not going to blow off a several thousand dollar wedding because the stage is three inches off. But, you know, it, it's in that contract so that, you know, that there's a... um. Okay, yeah, let me, I will take a look at somebody commented on this. Let me, uh, let me, oh, I don't have my headphones here. Um, I will turn this down a little bit. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the terms of the contractor, they're like, we didn't, um, you know, we didn't, they didn't meet the terms of the contract by having a level stage, but we're going to play anyway. Well, well and, 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 that and that can, can come, come into, into to to other, other in, 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 interact with other clauses as well because not having a stage is one thing you know but you got to they got to understand that um you have it set there for a reason um if you don't have a level stage um it's it's not just uh, going to affect how you play it's going to affect safety issues um and that can come with liability things if someone gets hurt or if the performance has to be stopped um if you guys are are really doing really killing it and uh, it, it puts the whole event on hold. Um, if that's to, if, if if it's clear that that the stage was the issue because of that, um, you know, it, it's going to protect you a lot better when that's clear. Um, it takes it off. It takes the um, impetus off you and puts it on them um, with with the liability because they didn't provide you what you needed. Um, that gives you the ability when you get there to fix the fix the issue on your terms and and them to understand that it might affect the quality of their event or performance. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, so what I did, I'm just going to mute myself while you're talking so that uh, we don't get the uh, delay issue there. Sorry, everybody. So real quick, I do want to go through this sample contract. And this is, this is one based on a contract that, that I use for a solo performance, just me and my computer. Um, so I've got that up on the screen. Um, you said that you flipped through this and, and it, was, it was not too bad. I like that, not too bad. Um, but definitely a couple of things to talk about. What were, what were some of the things that you saw that you like or that you didn't like? Let's take some time here to give a quick disclaimer, um, just for purposes, we always need to do this. Um, you know, we, this, this is something we're doing. These are examples we're giving, uh, generalities. Uh, this is not include, uh, gonna, um, constitute specific legal, legal advice. This is, uh, just for informational purposes. Um, this is a sample contract that we're going through. It's by no means a template. When you're doing these agreements, you really want to make something specific for every situation. Um, and what's, what's good for Matt. Um, even though, you know, he's, he's, he knows what he needs, he needs, um, is not going to be the same for everybody. So every situation is going to be different, but it is helpful for us to go through some of these and see some examples just to get us thinking in the right direction. Um, so what I'm looking at here, uh, you know, a header is good. You know, you want your information on there. Um, 
artist name. That's important. I mean, these these general terms. Um, the the beginning of the contract, you do want something telling you that it's a contract. So when people look at it, it states that it is actually an agreement, um, an agreement made on this date uh, with the two people named. Um, and then, um, you know, this is a little bit of legalese, but the important part of, about it is it tells you that this is an agreement and these are standard in, in most every contract. Um, this, the, the next sections I, th I think are good. A lot, a lot, you know, traditionally we have contracts written out, um, provision one, it, the, the event will take place on this day at the address of, of this, and it'll be written real formally, almost in sort of old English. Um, but I think it's, it's user-friendly to make it like this, where it's, um, you know, you've got some blocks here and, and it's fillable. So it's easier for you to uh, draw up a contract once, once you have a, something the way that's, uh, tailored for you the way you want it. But, um, yeah, these are the important things where it's going to be address, be specific times. Uh, this is always going to come up, um, cause these things can shift. Um, so you want a time on here that you know is going to work for you. And if the time changes, that's going to be on them to make sure they accommodate you rather than the other way around. You don't want them saying, well, we're going behind. You're contracted for two hours. Um, can you wait, wait here till midnight? Um, I think we've probably both had that happen here and there. Um, so we want it. We want a specific time on there when, when they're going to have their venue ready and their, their event ready. Um, so we, so we now, if there's something changes, and, and you know how weddings are, you've done a thousand of them too, weddings don't run on time. If, if you know one yeah. thing, if they say it starts at six, it's not going to start at six. Mm -hmm. So if they say it's going to go from six to eight, that's usually what I put to cover me. And then since they're going to be running late, and then I can just, I can be as accommodating as I kind of want to be at that point, right? Right. Um and, and that, that comes with the another thing we were talking about on the next part here, the payment arrangements. Um, you want to get that payment in advance um, if you can, um, or you want to have a very specific how you're going to get it. Um, if, you, if, if you're taking cards, you need transaction fees, um, what method it's going to be done. Um, the more specific you can really be in this portion is very important. You can have boilerplate in other, in other um, you know, clauses of these contracts but the, the details section is very important the exact address um the exact times uh what what are breaks going to be you know um you can be very specific about breaks um you know you're playing for three hours are you going to take a half an hour or 15 minutes um or if we're dealing with a schedule that's um that's a little that's going to be a little more loose maybe it just makes sense to put reasonable uh, leave it a little open um, while we still have the same hard time frame. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times on these payments too, we're taking deposits up front um, and then you're getting them uh, before the date. Um, I think we were talking about this too, Matt, how the final payment can be a little tricky sometimes. Uh, if you get it in advance, that's always ideal. But if you're getting it on the day of event, um, a lot of times you're getting it from someone who is attending the event and they may, they may be they're having fun. They may be having some drinks. Um, it's hard to, it's, it's kind of hard to get payment out of people at those times. Um, and you don't want to be in a si situation where you've performed your services, uh, couldn't get up with anyone on the, on the day of, and then you're trying to chase them down days after, uh, to get a check mailed from maybe somewhere that you're not close to. Um, you know, it, it's good to have a contract, but it's better to to have the cash in hand um, and have those terms knocked out. So um, you don't you you know it, it, you may have a right to sue someone, but it's 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 a it's a task to to go to court, even a small claims court, and uh, you don't want to have to do it if you don't have to. Yeah, I think you mentioned that your your terms on your band's contract are that payment in full is due like long before the performance, right? couple weeks. Yeah. You want to have it. You know, and, and for the, the reason is you don't want people waiting to the last minute. Um, you know, that's it. it you, you want it to be overdue by the time you want it because you got to get the, you got to get it mailed to you a lot of times or, or pass through a digital service, um, get those fees worked out, get it deposited in your account. So, you know, you have it, uh, before your, 
loading up gear, bringing trucks in, um, having con having subcontractors, um, cause then you'll be out that money. Yeah. I know in your situation for your band, sometimes you're subcontracting a horn section or whatever. Right. So you've got expenses, whether you get paid or not. Right. Yeah. Sound, um, uh, sound and tech, um, travel, air travel for some people, if, if you're bringing, bringing people out of town, um, it, it can add up quick. And, and if you don't get that money, it's, it's going to be on you. Yeah. Good heads up on that. Um, anything else you want to talk about on this page? Yes. Uh, with payments, um, you know, especially, I mean, I mean, this could be a whole thing and it's a whole podcast in its own. Um, but, uh, we learned, especially with COVID how, what, which part of these deposits are going to be refundable, uh, which, uh, and how much, uh, up to what time, um, and what if something happens, what's going to be the process with that? I, I know you have a force majeure clause in, on here, and that's going to be very related. Uh, what purposes can you cancel the event? Um, at what times and, and when are these deposits due? If, if someone cancels, can you keep the deposit? Um, you want to have that stuff spelled out. Yeah. And for the purposes of a, of, of a deposit and what we tell clients, if there's a, a discussion about the deposit, what the deposit does is it protects me because once you've inked that date onto my calendar, I'm not going to try to fill that date again. And if you cancel a week before the event, I don't have time to scramble another gig and I'm paying my bills with this here. You know, my, my mortgage company doesn't care that my gig got canceled. They still want their money. So the deposit generally in my world is not refundable unless I'm able to scramble a gig that pays me the same amount. And then, you know, but that's, that's a lot of work for me to basically not get paid to make the same amount of money I was going to make. That's correct. And, and when you're working with a group of musicians, the larger the, the, uh, the production, the more that's going to matter because you're paying, you're paying for, for a lot of this stuff in advance. Other people are clearing out gigs on their calendars. We, we know people that play in bands. They're, they, they don't always just play in one band. They play in multiple bands. Uh, they're giving up other opportunities. Um, you want to be able to compensate them if uh, you get stood up on something. Um, or, and, and you got to pay for the tech. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta rent stuff in advance. You gotta pay for travel in advance hotels. Um, some, some, of, some of that stuff you can get back and some of that stuff you can't. And if you did go to court and you're looking at this stuff, I mean, that's, that's going to be calculated down to the, down to the, uh, down to the dollar, um, what your actual damages are. Um, so, you know, limiting those as much as possible, but you want to have that cash in your account to cover that if it's not covered. Yeah. Good point. So, yeah, I think probably my, my payment terms on my sample thing here need to be a whole lot more detailed is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, for cancellations and, and, um, and that, uh, as we all know, that changed completely with COVID. Um, everything was canceled and, and it was, you know, no one's fault involved in the process. And there were different uh, governmental actions that had an effect on it. Um, some of them couldn't be performed, but some of the stuff, but like we're saying, some of the money was already spent. Um, it was a hard thing to figure out what was fair in that situation. And people just had to kind of wing it um, because even a force majeure clause, um, you know, epidemic didn't, wasn't always covered in those you're talking uh, and they, they talk about a lot of things, labor strikes, um, natural disasters. Um, but everyone on both sides was, was, um, interpreting those, um, as much in their favor and it wasn't always clear. Right. And so it's not always, you know, the default is the status quo, which means the money's in your bank account. It's not in mine. And, you know, I can try to sue you to get it, which is hard and it's going to cost me money. So, you know, the person who has contracted for the event and hasn't made payment yet, they're kind of in the catbird seat, really. Right. You want to have the advantage. I mean, most people are going to have an uh, opportunity to mitigate their damages to lessen, to lessen the effect on those as much as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, um, where the money is matters a lot and and what the terms are the, the more specific the terms are to protect that the better 
For sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll be a lot more detailed about my payment terms and, and all that kind of stuff in the future. You ready for page two? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do it. it. And of course, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section and we'll address those. But I think Tyler's being pretty, uh, pretty specific. It's almost like he does this for a living. <laughs> so I think this is good that, you know, it's showing that um, you're getting some details in advance. Um, this is not always included in a contract. Some of this stuff is just so you have good information to, to, to give good services. But it, it's good to document it in the agreement because then it, it shows that you asked for it and you were being diligent. Um, and then it, tells, it, it notes that the rider is included. And we'll go over that in a moment. Um, um, more, more details in the engagement. I think this is good. You're very specific about how the the programming is going to go. Um, some things um, I like to put in these situations, which I think can come up quite a bit, is that um, you pick the pick the songs for the most part. You pick the the material. Um, you'll have people that want to tell you every single song to play um, and exactly how to play it. And these people aren't always musicians. You know, some people think they're, they're, they're DJ experts. Um, and, you know, I think some input is very good, but when people try to micromanage the whole situation as a lay person, even though, you know, you want to know what they like and things like that. And, and they need to, you know, they, they, if they're hiring you, they're obviously liking what you're doing. Um, but, um, you know, listening to something on a play on a DJ playlist and having someone come in and perform it, uh, depending, especially depending on what type of band it is, can be very different. And um, they can pick a whole bunch of songs that don't work well together or don't work in a live situation with a band or um, for your particular instrumentation. And you, you at the end of the day, have to be able to be the stopgap to say, I want, you know, I know best um, with your input what what the material is going to be. Um, also personnel issues, um, uh, you have to be able to sub people if you need to. Um, I, I think we've seen, you know, a lot of these contracts are made a year out because weekends aren't weekends when people have things happening are scant and, um, you have to, there's a lot that can happen. Um, we've seen people pass away. We've seen people, uh, have big life changes, um, you know, have family issues that they have to deal with. Um, some people just flake out musicians <laughs> and um, you have to be able to, you know, be in charge of the personnel. Um, you don't want people raising a, a, a question about that or um, something that you didn't comply with what you were supposed to do. Um, you know, certainly, it, you know, you want it to be of the same standard um, and quality, um, but um, you want it, you also want to be in control of that. You don't want to have, an uh, allegation of breach uh, because you have a different person there or you didn't play every single song. Um, you know, sometimes there's not enough time for all the songs that they want to hear. Um, so you, you, you have to, I think it's good to put in there that you have control of those two issues specifically. Now you've got a situation where I think your band has a couple of different implementations, right? You can play with or without a horn section or whatever. How do you, uh, how do you talk about that in your contract? Um, I've tried to keep it open in the past, but a lot of pe people feel very comfortable when you lay it out. So I will list the instrumentation that I'm going to have, um, three vocalists, uh, three horn players, um, and uh, rhythm section. I, 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 I list the instruments out. Okay. And then if you need to sub out a different drummer or whatever, then that's, you're still covered. to be able to do that and and I um, because some people you know have the ability to to sub who who in your discretion is the best person for the gig at that moment um you don't want to have to be worried about calling people and clearing it with them who you know aren't really going to know what the situation is 
Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's very important to have control of the personnel and, and, the, and the programming um, and to put it specifically in the contract. Yeah, good call. Uh, ready for page three? Yes. Yes. All right. So this is where we get into all the legalese that uh, hopefully you understand a lot better than I do. Yeah. So these are um, some standard contract clauses, and and you know these will typically come at the end of the agreement. You'll see these. Um, so uh, cancellation. We talked about this a little bit with the payment issues. Um, so you're you reserve 60 days in advance to to cancel your contract okay so yeah that's good that is it that's very specific um and uh it, it says the deposit is refundable at that point and you give the right the client reserves the right to cancel this agreement without oblig upon written notice to the artist at any time um and they'll forfeit the, the deposit um, if it's after four, if it's sooner than two weeks before the performance, is that right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I could be more aggressive on that, but that's, that's what, this is for a solo performance. So it's pretty easy for me to, to replace that date if I need to, if it's just me. Okay. Now I, I'm, I'm reading it now that more specifically the, so you, what you will do, is, they can cancel at any time. If it's, if it's later, if, if, if it's more than 14 days before the engagement, um, you, you keep the deposit. If it's, if it's past that time, they have to give you the whole thing. Yes. Okay. okay. I think, I think that's, that's pretty good. good. I like that. It gives them, it, it, it gives them leeway, but it, it still holds them accountable financially. So I, I think that's a good way to do it. Um, you know, again, I think getting the, the, having when, the, when the, fees are to be paid could could improve it a little bit um just so you know when you're getting that final um final payment and you're you know you don't you won't have to worry about chasing people down um and you know some venues that's impractical i understand because um they do their accounting that way especially we know club dates and things like that you're going to get paid on the night up. there's no way around that they're not going to pay in advance um but um a, a median to that i think is upon arrival or before uh before setting up um is good to get the money then if you have to do it on day of and and you know they're not going to require to give it to you afterwards um you know so again some places there's no way around that but i think when you're dealing um with personal parties in, in your own capacity you should try to try to do that if you can uh force majeure uh, we talked about that with um, some of those issues as well. Um, and again, like we're looking at this acts of regulation of public authorities, labor, labor difficulties or strikes, inclement weather, epidemic, um, interruption or delay of transportation service acts of God. So that'll, um, you know, be grounds for cancellation um, of the contract um, with the, uh, and and I, I think this this makes me think about something else uh, along with kind of like the staging issues and things like that is um, you want to make sure that you put in your contracts that they're going to follow regulations and and um, uh, governmental requirements to keep you safe um, that they'll provide you safe working conditions that they'll abide by all laws and um, insurance regulations uh, licensing agreements. Um, you, you don't want to uh, have see something get shut down um, uh, just and then you're you're out of luck because they didn't file a permit or they didn't um, get the proper insurance requirements. Um, I think we've we've even I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen some big, big events put on that you weren't sure were quite above board that you're playing at. Um, I, <laughs> I've certainly been at a couple of those and. Um, you know, uh, it, it's good to have that in. I mean, I think it's, you assume people are going to understand that they're going to abide by laws and rules that they're required to. Um, but it's better to have it in the contract that they're going to do it. And if they don't do it, it's going to be on them. All right. So get a clause in here to something about making sure that they abide by all relevant uh, local, state, national standards for health and safety or whatever. 
yeah and and keep a safe working environment for for the performers and and, and you you know you're talking about power situations when you're playing outside uh we know this happens a lot uh, to keep everything safe from rain uh insects excessive heat um that can be a medical issue that can be a safety issue and it certainly can affect the performance um so you want to have that in there that uh they're going to provide you conditions and 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 abide by these things i think the thing we added to ours when after COVID, that people would abide by executive orders um because that's not always considered um in rules and regulations statutes uh those sorts of things um you want to be as broad as you can and all that and that's why you see in this clause force majeure clause they try to list out everything they can think of but there's still things that um that 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 are out there i mean it's an exhaustive list um sickness and accidents um yeah i mean if if someone you know if someone dies or becomes uh unavailable um for for purposes of health i mean i think that's 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 a good clause to have um pretty self-explanatory indemnification um is a clause you want in every contract um that's going to say who's going to be responsible for uh negligence or or accidents that happen um you're going to have big equipment you're going to be dealing with electricity um you're going to be dealing with rowdy people uh at a lot of these things um a lot of hazards that that you know they don't uh, they usually everything usually goes pretty smoothly but when it doesn't um you could be talking about millions of dollars at stake um you don't want to be responsible because someone gets crazy and knocks a speaker over on someone's head or a tree of lights um it, you know especially uh the people that there are their attendees at at the event um so you want to you want to be as specific as you can in that um and i think this is pretty good it says you're responsible for your own conduct um uh, th they're going to take care of you if they break your stuff or hurt you um due to their acts or or the acts of their guests um but i, I think you also yeah and they and cl and client indemnifies the artist and holds the arts harmless for any property damage or personal injury that re results from or is related to the performance that is not caused by the artist um and i think that that cover that sounds like it covers them and their guests and things like that so um you don't want to be responsible for that they, they need to be responsible for that um because it, it might not only be them or the guests the damage to the venue um you don't want to be included in those suits you you want to say hey it's in the contract you're responsible for that um you're named in a suit you um you, you want to try to get that dismissed right away Get, get out of that and leave it on them per that contract. That's the purpose of that. A um, couple other uh, clauses that are common in these agreements. Um, you're going to have a lot of time a severability clause. And that's going to be something that says, hey, if something in this um, agreement is written the wrong way or it's unconstitutional or it's against law or policy, it's going to be taken out of this agreement. And it's not going to be, um, it's not going to, it's not going to ruin the whole agreement. Everything else is going to still in effect. It's not going to invalidate the whole contract. It's only going to invalidate uh, the part that is improper, um, and that's pretty straightforward. And I think that's a good thing to have in there. So I would definitely recommend adding that. Um, and and a similar related clause is an integration clause, um, and that's going to say, um, which I I think occurs a lot in these agreements. We do a lot of things informally. So you may have this agreement signed, but you may have had 10 conversations with this person about what you're gonna do. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna have emails, phone calls, texts, uh, all that stuff's gonna be evidence of the agreement. But you you might not want um, some of those to be part of the final agreement. So a lot of times you're gonna wanna say, hey, what's in this document, the four corners of these pages is the agreement. Anything else we're talking about um, is not gonna be uh, grounds for breach or is not going to alter anything that's in here um this is it and if 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 it's not in there and if it's something that's in a text message or an email we're going to need to get it in here before we sign this to make sure we're on the same page um that way you're not dealing with 10 different modes of transportation that you're trying to make into one thing that that is probably going to be at odds in some respect um, it's all going to be here laid out 
um, and there's not going to be any questions about it. So that's that's an integration clause or sometimes called a merger clause um, that um, we're going to be look that you're going to want in there as well. Um, and choice of law. You may have an agreement and a dis dis a disagreement comes up. You travel to, um, you know, you do trips to uh, California, to to Florida, to uh, to uh, Tennessee. I'm sure um, you're you're going to want to know how those agreements are going to be handled um, in in a county that's convenient and in a choice of law that's convenient, um, and that's going to differ per agreement. Um, but you're going to want to lay it out so you're not trying to sue someone in one jurisdiction. Uh, or, or especially for local, um, you want to, if it's local, you, you have a little more power, uh, to make it where you're at, um, in North Carolina. Um, if, if you're up here in the triangle with us, you're going to want it to be, um, where you're at. So you can go down the street. You don't have to go to, um, you know, Rockingham County or, or Cherokee County to, to, to file your action. If, if you have to enforce your agreement, uh, I'd, I'd want it done in Wake County. Um, so on, under the laws of North Carolina, um, you know, a lot of these agreements, especially when you're getting into recording and stuff like that, um, you're going to have to do a, a major state like California or, or New York. Um, and that's just the way it always is. But, um, especially for some of these performance agreements, I think you're want to, you're going to want to try to control the venue that you'll have to litigate in. Um, so that's important. Um, so if I'm signing a performance contract, say I'm going to, to California to play a show, I can put in the contract that if there's a dispute, you got to fight me in Wake County, North Carolina. And if, if you're, you're making, making the contract, contract yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're making the contract, you um, you have that ability. They may say no, but they may over. You know, maybe people don't care about that so much, and and you can keep it on your terms. You know, um, but yeah, I, I think when you're drafting it, um, or you know, you're you should always have an attorney drafted for you. Um, that's something to talk about and make sure it's, it's going to be something that's convenient for you. Or if you have to go to California, um, you know, you probably want it in somewhere you can, you can fly into if you need to LA or you don't want to have to be going to some remote County, um, where they're, where they have their, their business office or something like that. Or, um, a lot of times people will want it to go to arbitration. That may, that may be a good idea or it may not. Sometimes it's a little harder in those situations to recover and you, you lose some options. So um, that's that's going to be included in that and uh, something you want to be aware of when you read it. All right, I've got a couple of questions here. So let's see if we can put some of these up. Um, and Jeremy <laughs> said, I hope I didn't miss the beginning, but I've been letting people that hire me use e-signatures. Is that a mistake? I think e-signatures are common. Uh, Wake, uh, North Carolina, um, has an act about e-signatures, they're accepted. Um, you know, I, I would make sure you do them through a proper service and, and have, uh, those, you, you know, you want to make sure it's a good program you're using. And most of the standard ones will do that, but e-signatures are acceptable. Uh, we use them all the time in many documents. I mean, some specific court filings are going to require a higher standard, but, uh, when you're dealing with people, if, if, um, uh, North Carolina is, is good on e-signatures and, um, just use a good, good service. That's, that's going to, um, uh, back it up well and, and make sure you can access it and use it well. But I, I think they're helpful. I think it, it uh, when, when you're trying to get something signed and you can have someone have an e-signature and then it's data stamped and, uh, protected that way, you can, you can get it signed a lot quicker because it, it's so easy. You just send it by email and, and you click it. So I think e-signatures are good. I do like, I like them. Awesome. Uh, next question. How much do you usually determine is kept if the client cancels the gig? I think we talked some about this since she asked the question, but yeah, any more you want to add to that? Yeah, um, I think that can vary, but uh, um, the first thing you want to figure out is how much your damages are going to be. Um, I think uh, you want to make sure it covers enough. Usually you want to do a standard percentage, a third or a half. Um, some people do more, but um, you want to make sure, I think, as a baseline that it covers any expenses you're going to have, uh, travel you have to prepay for, equipment you have to pre-rent, 
um, if you're going to have to pay other people, other subcontractors um, for for cancellations. Um, so I would I would take that all in, in the deposit, uh, keep that if it gets canceled. Um, and I like how Matt does it. If 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 they cancel it very close, uh, you probably want to keep the whole thing if you can. Um, but and, and I guess that's another thing you want to calculate. Uh, at what point is it going to be? You're not going to be able to rebook that date, and it's going to be a, a complete loss. I mean, that might be the point where you, you want to require full payment. Good. And then one more question here. Are contracts mostly geared for pro level musicians? Well, I say pros if you're getting paid. So if you're getting paid, you probably want a contract. Yeah. I mean, uh, anyone can be a pro musician, um, you know, and, and this is part of being a pro music, musician, um, getting these things in order. I mean, if, if, if you're playing enough and you're getting paid enough where um, you're going to have these issues come up uh, constantly, it's good to have. I mean, you know, you may play a, a gig at a small club or something like that, and and they may want to do it informally. But a lot of these business and, and a lot of times, especially back in the day, you do things on a handshake, you, you'd uh, you'd get cash um, and, and you're seeing less and less of that. Everyone's getting a lot more formal. A lot of a lot of more places are getting formal booking agents. They're 1099 ing everyone. Um, and uh, it's it's very well documented. So why not document the why not why not document the agreement? Um, and sometimes you have a you have an a, a agreement in an email, that can be a contract. Um, so you know it's it's good to even uh, be more specific in your emails and texts. It's not ideal if if you want a real contract if you can that's signed and on paper, um, but um, a contract is a writing. It's an agreement between two people. Uh, for exchange of value. And uh, you can use those if if you're in a pinch. So, um, you know, if if, if there, there's pro level musicians that do it to the T, but if if you're on your way to being a pro musician or an intermediate, then these are the things you want to do to to get to that level. It's, uh, you know, it's it's the same as improving your playing and getting more serious about your gigs is uh, uh, getting getting organized, getting your finances, getting your documents in in, in order. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you want to, you want to be as, as, uh, as prepared as possible and, and, and as organized as possible and a contract is one way of doing it. So, um, I think it's a good thing to have. And, and once you get one you like that works for you, you can reuse it or, 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 or slightly. Yeah. It's like, I would think about how bummed out am I going to be if the client just says, Hey, we're not going to pay you. You know, if it's, if it's 50 bucks and a bottle of beer, then, you know, maybe I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm not going to mess around with the contract. Of course, at this point, I'm not showing up to the gig either. But if it's enough money that I would be kind of hacked off if you didn't pay me, let's get it in writing. Yeah, and it's not always just the money. I mean, you want to, a contract, um, how, many, how many times have you seen people get double booked? When you have a contract, it, it reminds people that they have the date. It gives it, documents it, um, it puts it out there. So um, it, it, there, it's protecting yourself in more ways than money. You know, you can have an accident at a gig, you know, then the, then you have that indemnification clause. Um, those can help you out in situations even even that aren't, um, you know, super high production events. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's also it, it showed my experience is if you give somebody a real deal on a gig or a freebie, you get treated worse than if you give them a, a top level price. And, and this sort of factors into that. If you send a contract with this whole thing, people are going to be like, oh, like this is a, an actual transition transaction. This person's actually serious about what they do. You're more likely to get treated right than if you don't. And and looking more professional, I think it, it helps you look more professional, too. It, it and, and that can help you command a, um, a higher price as well. Very true. Um, I'm going to, let's pop over to the rider and, and I'll say like, there's a famous story going around and I think a lot of people know it about, um, about, uh, Van Halen and they would very famously ask for a bowl of M&Ms on a, on a table in their dressing room with all the brown ones picked out. 
And everybody's like, are these guys just doing the rock star thing, trying to see what they can get away with? And it turns out the reason they did that was when they got off the bus and they walked into the venue, they knew right away, did they read the contract? Did they follow our rider? Are we going to have everything we need? Am I going to make sure, I'm going to make sure that the flash pots aren't going off in my face. It's sort of a, it was a, uh, you know, a, a bellwether to let them know that, oh, it's going to be a good night. They actually read the contract. That's right. Yeah. Um, rider is going to be everything you need. I, I, we, t we touched on this a little bit, but um, yeah, I've heard, I, I've heard that story. I'm sure many of us have, um, you know, all that stuff's M and M's. I mean, they're, they're coming out of the production budget. It's not like you're just asking for a bunch of extra free stuff. Um, but in a lot of these things, it's, it's going to be add on. So, um, and I think where it comes into finances particularly is, um, you're not going to have to keep recalculating your rates. This can help you kind of deal with some of those variable costs in more of a, uh, an organized way. Um, you have your fee, but Hey, this gigs in my hometown or this gigs in another state. And the um, the costs go up exponentially. Um, if you're flying a large group to another state, say um, that that I mean that's that almost is going to double your costs. Um, and you have to have these uh, requirements for um, things you have on here: transportation, uh, uh, hotel rooms, travel, um, production. Um, you know, you're going to need to hire, you're going to need to get local production crews. And a lot of times the venue is going to be in a lot better uh, situation to, to, to clear that for you. Um, they have, you know, a lot of times they have deal with rooms, deal with travel. Um, you, and, and it's good to be synergistic on that. Um, I think, uh, and then a lot of things too here, uh, kind of overlaps with the contract at times, um, access to the venue. That's a huge thing. Uh, they're telling you, you need to be ready to play by this time. You need to be sound checked and quiet by this time. Okay, well, you need to be able to get in and you need to know how you're going to do that. Um, so then if there's a delay or something's not going on schedule, they're not going to put it on you. So I think that's a great thing to have in there. Um, it, it's very specific on how you're going to load in. You want to have a clear path to be able to get all your stuff up there the, the way you need to. Um, it's going to tell people what kind of power requirements you need. Um, that's very important if, if you've ever blown out a circuit somewhere, um, you know, how, what much of a disaster that can cause. So you got to put them on notice that this is what you need. Separate circuits of, of, of adequate power, um, sound and lighting. Yeah, I mean, uh, you want the show to look good stage. Uh, <laughs> we talked about your, your, uh, tilted stage. Um, you know, stages can vary, um, it's, it's gotta be the proper size and shape for, for the performance. It's gotta be, um, sturdy, um, pose no safety risks. Um, and people have to eat, um, and be able to get dressed. So they look good and, and have energy. I, I, again, I think we talked about a lot of that stuff, but, um, I think what you have here is, has some good stuff in it. Um, and it's a good sample to look at for some ideas. Um, have you ever had any issues? With, with, with the meetings. Oh yeah. That's why a lot of these things are here. Like you said, with your contract, you know, it's, um, say up here at transportation and actually I, as I'm looking at this, I need to amend that to where it says purchasers responsible for transportation costs and arrangements. I need to add subject to artists approval because they may find a flight that's $4 cheaper and they route me from here to Tennessee via Anchorage or something or they got me leaving at four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, bro, no. So well, well, it's going to have to be subject to my approval. Yeah. And there's certainly things you, you can put in to make that more specific. You can require direct flights. You can require a certain minimum star hotel. Um, those are independently verifiable um, meals. I think we know is, is a common thing with the, the legend of the bandwidges um, where they give you the, the sandwich box. Um, I think it's good to say hot dinners um, individually plated. You don't want a big bucket of slop either. You see, you see people get that sometimes. Um, 
So uh, I like if there's catering for the guests, artists will be served from the same menu. I think that's a good thing to say. That um, one actually came from a gig that we played at the Angus Barn, which for those outside Raleigh is a pretty high-end steakhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, and our contract said that they would feed us, and there were nine of us, including the crew. And, and the guests are eating prime rib, and they brought us these soggy old, like, Subway sandwiches. And we're looking at these sandwiches like, what the crap is this? And the kitchen <laughs> help was actually like, yo, that's BS, bro. We're going to bring you some actual food and we're just going to bill the client for it. And that's just going to be how it is. Because we played there a lot. We were friends with those guys. That's nice. I'm, I'm glad it had a happy ending. Um, and, and you have the time on there. I think that's important too. They don't, you don't want them uh, feeding you right before you go on and rushing you, rushing you out of there. Um, so yeah, and, and, you know, keeping in the theme, it's good to be specific on this stuff, but yeah. And, and you see, you, you try to think of everything and there's still stuff you want to, you want to change because something happens and you don't want it to happen again. Yeah, absolutely. Now there was a contract, um, from my, or a question from my friend Pete, who's in the UK. Uh, he just got here from his gig said, what constitutes a contract in the USA? We covered this a little bit earlier, but, uh, we can cover that for Pete real quick here. Yeah, um, con contract um, in the in the USA. I mean, a lot of these things are going to derive from the same principles. Uh, common law, um, British British law, and American law is very it's it's different in a lot of ways, but it's 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 rooted in a lot of the same principles. Um, contracts generally in many jurisdictions are are just those elements we've been talking about. Uh, an agreement bet made between two people um, for for an exchange of consideration or value. Um, so, uh, there's, there's rules sometimes, but a lot of, a lot of times a verbal contract is going to hold up. Um, you know, a, a lot of times the rule in a lot of jurisdictions is it only has to be in writing if it's, if it's going to be take place over, uh, longer than a year. Um, but that's why you want to have a good, good help in writing these agreements, making sure you, you know, what's going to work, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, a conversation, a verbal contract can be enforceable because uh, it meets those elements. It just, you kind of sometimes bump into a he said, she said situation. And if you're trying to go to court and prove stuff, you could spend a lot of money on lawyers and it's a coin toss whether you win this thing or not. Right. Because then it's not just a legal dispute. Um, it's more of a factual dispute. Uh, what was said? So yeah, always better to have it in writing, certainly. I mean, I'm glad you said that. Um, but you know, if, if you didn't, you know, you want to be aware that you don't want to just give up if it's important. Um, but yeah, protect yourself as much as you can put in writing, be specific. All right. I th Oops. I think we've kind of covered all the questions that came in here. We've been going about an hour. And I don't know what you bill an hour, but you know, I'm sure I'll get a, <laughs> get a detailed invoice based on the, he's going to have a contract I can't get out of. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate you, uh, you phoning in with us here. And uh, if people have more questions, say you're watching this after the fact, you can put some questions in the comments section and uh, Tyler and I'll both do our best to kind of catch up with those. And, um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for being a great bass player. Thanks, Matt, and um, and same to you. You're 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 the man on violin for me, and uh, always love playing with you. Always love talking to you, telling stories. Uh, thanks for having me here today. This was really great, and, and I hope we can do it again. Yeah, man. So uh, yeah, thank you, and everybody. We will see you. I'm actually going to be doing another live stream on Wednesday with my buddy Earl Manian. He's got two new projects out. Uh, his string quartet, his acoustic string quartet, just did a remake of an entire um, uh, metal album, and it's escaping me, Dillinger Escape Plan. He just did a, a whole remake of a Dillinger Escape Plan album, and it's amazing. And he's got an album out where he wrote a concerto for Rachel Barton Pine, and it's the B-side with a Shostakovich concerto, all recorded by the Scottish National Symphony. It's amazing stuff. Earl's going to talk about that project and, and electric strings and acoustic strings and a whole bit. So definitely an interview you don't want to miss. Earl is a piece of work. I have no idea what's going to come out of his mouth, 
uh, it could be just for the entertainment value alone, this thing will be worth watching. So uh, hopefully see everybody at three o'clock Eastern on Wednesday, right back wherever you're watching me right now. So, all right, thanks everybody. And uh, I'll see you on Wednesday.